<laughs> Hello there. Uh, my name is Tris Regisus, and this is my Dyson Sphere program ongoing series. Uh, I've been streaming this over on YouTube, and basically no one watches on YouTube. Um, it's a couple of videos I've got a few views. Um, the very first one, uh, one about yellow science, but otherwise pretty much nothing. But since I've been streaming Factorio uh, at weekends, and this is a similar sort of game, uh, I kind of figured I might as well give it a go on Twitch as well. In terms of where I am with the game, let's continue. I was planning during this week to kind of play the game off stream and sort of progress things. I have not played basically anything this week. Um, literally the only game I've played is a game called Maquette, Maquette? I think that's how you pronounce it, uh, which is a puzzle game. I mean, it's a couple of hours long. Um, and in fact, I think I don't even think it took me two hours to complete, but uh, it's like a short puzzle game. It's absolutely gorgeous. Um, although as a puzzle game, it's not not that good a set of puzzle, puzz, puzzles, but it is gorgeous and I quite like the story. Um, but yeah, so that's literally all I've played this week, so I have made no progress with this at all. In fact, I think I probably burnt myself out a bit, full stop, recently, with the amount of this I've played and streaming Factory at the weekends. Um, what I did in the last episode, or towards the end, I got a bit carried away. It was only, I mean, it's last Friday when I streamed, but I got a bit carried away, I think. Um, what well, I, I know. And we ended up warping to an entire new galaxy. This this is not my home galaxy. Uh, galaxy solar system. This is a red giant. Is that a red giant? I can't remember now. Um, a, yeah, a red giant uh, solar system. That is about three light years, I think, away from our home system. So there is nothing here. I haven't built anything here. Uh, we have. Um, the reason I came here specifically is because we have basically almost all of the weird resources. So the one I'm stood next to, uh, kimberlite oil, um, or kimberlite oil, kimberlite ore, is one of the weird weird resources. I don't think it has um, uni unipolar magnets, which I've seen a lot on the Reddit are quite a thing that people want to want to find and want to have. Partly I think that's because there's no gas giant here, I seem to recall. Um, but we did have a weird, I think it was Kafa 1, that was a, a completely new biome. I didn't know it did properly different biomes. Um, so that was quite fun. So what I'm sort of proposing, really, for this, this stream is basically to fly to some of the local solar systems while I stack up research. Where I've got quite a long way in the research tree. As you can see, I've done most of the researches. My understanding for the end game, uh, again from the Reddit, I've I've not got there. I've not not got another save. I did I did have one, but I've not got a save going. Um, but my understanding for the end the end game is that basically you end up it's quite grindy, um, and that this mission complete with the four thousand white cubes. You see these these white cubes. Not only do they require input of the the red, green, and uh, blue. Um, but each white cube also requires that, you see that black circular one, the anti, I think it's antimatter, um, but it certainly requires antimatter in some way, um, which you get from here, I think. Is that right? Mass energy storage? Antimatter and hydrogen. There you go. And basically, you need um, one of those for every one of these you make but it this process this one here this um, particle collider is incredibly energy intensive and that's why you want and it's also why it gives you these this artificial star thing that's where you, your Dyson sphere comes in basically because um, on my home st uh, so solar system I've not I've not built us a, a Dyson sphere yet I've got Dyson swarm on the go uh, but the actual Dyson Sphere, I've not even researched yet. Um, partly because we need the green cubes, and 
that's kind of where this research is going. So, so basically, because this requires, oh no, it doesn't require green, does that one? Yeah, that one requires green, you see. So, there's a bunch of stuff where we sort of run out of where we can go with research without making it green. I'm not making green because we've not quite unlocked the technology yet. Um, but basically, I say, what we're doing this episode is only going to be a couple of hours. Um, and basically, I'll do the research to get these done. Uh, and we may end up going back to our home, plan home solar system. But my plan, really, if I hit the right key, is to go off exploring some of these other star systems. Uh, because now that we've got the warpers, I can basically try and fly to them. Um, but what I hadn't appreciated is it uses your, your energy uh, when you're flying in in warp. So we may not. Some of them may be a bit too far away, or we may have to sort of hop, hop, skip, and a jump. How do I get the? Yeah, there we go. Just zoom out. So. So that's five light years away, six light years. So they're all quite far away. This is the it, one of the things that's quite useful for this is it names them. So, as in, the, it puts the old, you know, the tag on to show where you've actually been. Um, so that's our home solar system. We flew all the way here on one charge. Um, so we can easily go to some of these other ones. I think um, it's a little difficult to. To tell the different distances, if it used to have lines or something uh, drawn on to sort of show the orientation, because it feels like this should be, you know, this should be done. It feels like something that would work really, really be really awesome in VR. You know, if you could, fl you know, fly this around. I think, um, but yeah. So I might head home first, or you know, we could head down to something like that. So. Because our home system is a G-type star, um, but now that we have um, some of the, because what we got, like kimberlite, organic crystals, sulfuric acid, it's not particularly interesting. That's also annoying when it, it just zooms straight into them. I wish I could click on them and it didn't zoom away. Fractal silicon. So there are quite a lot of different ores kicking about. But I just, I'm not really. And quite, I quite like to just explore them. So what's that? So that's a B-type star. Ooh, that's pretty. It's too far away for us to work out what's there, though. And I quite like to just see some of them. I mean, where, where's a black hole? Is miles away, I think, isn't it? Is that the black hole? Yeah, there's the black hole. It's absolutely ages away there. Neutron star as well. Cool. So I just want to go around, go around and see some of these, to be honest with you. So first thing we'll do queue up some research. I think I'll just queue up sort of everything. And we'll get, get all of this going, basically. We might as well do that. Everything we can do, we might as well do. And can I, I can't do that. I can do that, though. So actually, if I cancel that, queue that one. Queue that one. And then everything else requires green. So we would have to, you know, either go home or build somewhere else. Uh, I'm, I'm in, quite interested to see what these are. I'm not quite sure what that might be. The way it comes up, I'm wondering if these are ways of boosting productivity out of the out of this. Because say, my understanding of this end game is it's very grindy, um, and you have to, you know, producing these is massively energy intensive, and the only way to get lots of them is to just, you know, scale up everything. Uh, which is why you've got an entire solar system, but um, but yeah. <clears throat> right then, so what I want to check as well is, are all the upgrades blocked? Do they all require green or precursor technologies that we don't have? So that's all green. Uh, that's green, that's green. Because I think they are, I think they're locked off from us. Until we get green. Apart from this, but this is you know that this is meant to boost you, help you out in the end game. Um, so there's no point doing that yet. Yeah. So once those techs are done, green science is what we have to build. But say so I'm not too too fussed about doing that. As you see, I've got loads of these lenses and the 
space warpers. Um, uh, what am I trying to put in? I'm putting in energy, but I didn't appreciate we were going to need quite so much energy. Um, but I've got, I mean, I've got tons of it. Right, so, off we go. Right, so let, let's have a look, actually. Where do we want to go? Where do I want to go? Um, I mean, we could go home and I could grab more energy first, you know. I think that's probably the way to go. Oh, you can actually see my ships flying about. That's interesting. Yeah, well, we'll go home, as it were. Where is it? Ita Agura. There it is. So we want to sp we want to speed up first off. Let's get to maximum speed. And then I th if I think we let the energy recover before we initiate warp, maybe maybe it's better to. It's probably better to just warp straight off. I guess. Although, I think you can't warp inside or close to a star. I think that's right. They uh, they kind of confirmed. Well, they didn't kind of confirm. They they basically directly confirmed. Wave function interface. Cool. Now they directly confirmed that blueprints are coming. Right. So if we it's caps lock, isn't it? There we go. Uh, Yeah, as I say, they directly confirmed in a, a, a tweet to somebody um, that uh, blueprints are coming. And one of the sort of things to that... 20... So let's drop out of warp. Now! Oh, we're a bit away. Actually, where's, where's the home... There we go, there's the home planet. Uh, yeah, and it's one of the things I hadn't realised is all the planets are the same size. Not the gas giants, because I mean you wouldn't put you wouldn't need blueprints for them anyway, but all the planets are the same size. So that and that's why, because they're gonna do some sort of blueprinting system. And as I've been in my previous streams talking about how I couldn't quite understand how you'd make blueprinting work, that's kind of the way. They're obviously going to let you design a factory, you know, say if you build one, design one at the equator with the spacing, you'll then just be able to stamp it down, you know, at the equator of both your own same planet and other planets. But obviously you wouldn't be able to stamp it down, you know, at the poles because because the grid, align, grid, grid alignments don't work. Let's see if we can crash. No, we bounced off. Let's slow down then. There we go. Uh, so which pole is my stuff at? Because what I'm thinking is I base if I basically just load up this other way. Where's where are my where's my loading area? Yeah, if I basically just sort of load up, so that's science. It was near science, wasn't it? Here we go, that's it there. So where are we at? Okay, so it's that way. Oh, it's right here. <laughs> Yeah, I think if I just load up with, you know, sort of everything I need to to go exploring. Um, so if we stick everything else in a chest or two. Oops. Uh, oh, the other thing I was going to check here because they did they did a, they fixed a bug that meant that upgrades weren't um, uh, factories weren't working properly as it were. So I did just want to check. Clicking on the wrong thing there. 
How are we actually doing power-wise? So it's pretty close to demand, but I'm not overstepping. Okay. Quantum chip research. Uh, right, so uh, I'm not actually sure what what do you need to make um, warpers? I can't remember. So you make them out of graviton lenses, don't you? And they're from strange matter and diamonds. Okay. There's somewhere I'm making them, isn't there? Okay, so I can get rid of probably sort of everything else. Got diamonds there, look. Tiny little bit of strange matter. So we just get rid of everything. Want that though. Uh, actually, I'll put that in there. Yeah, oops! Didn't mean to do that. So, I've hopefully got strange matter somewhere. So, I'm pretty sure I have. But yeah, I want to stock up, lo get, take loads of this since it's using up, using this. Uh, using these, rather. For us to transport. I want to make sure we're fully tucked up with that. We've got an entire inventory. So that shouldn't be any problem. So, how many of them can I make warpers now? So in theory I can make 127 warpers, so we're, we're totally sorted, really. But let's go and find where that strange matter was being made. It's somewhere I just stuck it down randomly to make some. I have a feeling it was close to close to our research area, wasn't it? This isn't it. That's not it. somewhere. Ah! That's strange matter. Here we go. This is this is the badger. So if we just grab some of these, say about 150 of them. So we can now make absolutely loads of loads of stuff. Excellent. Uh, in fact, I might as well just grab some more warpers, more lenses. Go on. Why not? So we are we are absolutely loaded up with stuff, so I can go exploring. Uh, what I thought I might do as well is this make everything area, which is where there it is that way. And let's make every if we make a little um, charger station, you know. if and when I come back here. So I just need to grab, what say, them, and then we can just plop down. You can do these in sort of fancy arrangements, but we'll just pop down. You know, sort of four or... Is that going to be too far? Yeah, it's too far away, isn't it? You can, you can get it to do loads of them, but I can't be bothered. Um, Let's pop them away then. Yeah, so it's literally the idea is just to uh, you know fly around and, and see what we can find really. Um, cool. So where do we want to go? Right. Should we visit there? Thirty eight Corvy. Let's see if we can get to there. Okay, so Now, where would they? It really does. Sometimes, it, I mean, this game is gorgeous at times. I mean, look at that. Uh, so, where's that? Is that 38 Corvy? No. 38 Corvy, where are, where are you, my friend? There we go. So, let's see. So, I'm only going slow. So, let's see if I can just walk inside. Oh! 
So she's 38 core of you then. Oh. So what has this solar system got in it? What, how many planets have we got here? So we've got six planets. I think they said, I mean, they, they did a dev blog where they sort of explained some of the stuff of how they designed everything. And basically, I think three, I think the range was... Was it two to six planets, something like that? Um, and they have, you know, they've set all sorts of limits on, you know, number of types of stars and all this sort of stuff. Um, so that's gravity matrix is done. So since we're at the beginning in in a solar system, should we get a thirty-eight core for one? Might as well. That's bright, isn't it? Crikey. So this looks interesting. What the heck's going on here? Is this a lava planet, maybe? Actually, we can have a look and see what, what it says there is in this solar system now, can't we? So we've got lots of kimberlite ore. I can't remember what that makes. What does it make? Uh, kimberlite magma, CO2 conditions, and diamond can only be further smelting. Okay, so you can smelt that into diamond, I guess. Ocean type lava. Okay. Covered in rocks. They're so cool, though. So yeah, that's that's kimblite oil. Or I keep saying kimblite oil. Wait, is this? So if that's that. Oh look, yeah, like we're. All the rotation speed and inclination and stuff appears to be off, sort of off axis, as it were. Like it's it's rotating backwards, effectively. Cool, cool. I love that they included that. It's sort of pointless in a sense, but so this is just a barren rock, basically barren volcanic rock. Got all the bloody stone on it, and you just got mostly regular ores, but a few chunks of kimberlite, kimberlite. some titanium there. Okay, silicon and lots and lots of titanium, copper. So it's pretty rich. Pretty rich. I mean, I wonder if you can can you get something different out of lava, maybe. Like if you put water pumps into it. Quantum printing technology. Like the assembly machine Mark Three. So those are the faster replicators. It's really cool the way it glows. So they've done they've done a lot. I was talking about this on one of my previous streams in terms of what, how they've optimized it. They've done a lot with lighting and light effects. Which are relatively sort of CPU. I mean, obviously they sort of. Um, so where is? No, nope, wrong button. 
Where is Corvy 2? So Corvy 2 sort of off in that direction. No, nope, one button. No. Nope. Corvy 2, there we go. Yeah, they've done a lot with um, like visual effects and particle effects and stuff like that, which are graphically sort of intensive, you know, graphical power required. And of course you can adjust to suit your your particular um, you know, graphics card capabilities, it were. But uh, it limits the CPU load, which then means that it can be this bigger game with, you know, lots of items in it and lots of machines and all that sort of stuff without too much, too much extra load on the processor. So what's Corvy 2 then? This looks like maybe an ice planet. Be a bit weird for it to be so close with it being an ice planet. Oh no, maybe maybe it's another. What have we got here then? Oh, so far sulfuric acid ocean. That's useful because that's a kind of a lip, quite a difficult to produce resource. And it's if it's a you know if it's an ocean then it's basically unlimited. Okay, so it looks like it's probably sort of volcanic as well, basically. Um, another thing I would quite like, I presume this somebody's going to mod it, sort of thing that might well go into to be mods, but as well as having the ability to flatten the terrain. It'd be good to be able to lower the terrain as well. Um, you know, to be able to create oceans. Um, that'd be quite useful. Wah. Yeah, this look, looks fairly boring, this, but it's... Uh, Sulfuric acid, so then they're quite quite a small. If that's ninety eight point four percent, then it's just one point six percent, isn't it? Of the the construction area is sulfuric acid, but, but yeah, this might be quite good to come and grab all of this. Okay, okay. Oops. Uh, out of that view, let's get the head off. Where's Corvy three? It looked like Corvy 3 and 4 were probably... So that's Corvy 6. Corvy 1. Corvy 2. Where the heck is Corvy 3 and 4? I think they were together, you see. Here we go. What's going on here? Is this three planets together? Maybe. One looks like a gas giant. So is this three planets not take together? Yeah, it's uh, a gas giant with two planets orbiting it. speed so we're gonna have a look if we have a look at the, the gas giant first because this might have some of these some interesting stuff on it So it's kind of Nep Neptune style, isn't it? Cool. Okay. Um, 
So let's have a look at what this has got in it. So this is fire, ice and hydrogen. Okay. So much like home. Cool. Okay. Uh, so let's... Where's Corvi? So that's five. So let's head over there. So this looks like another, I don't know, one of these rock style planets. Vertical launching silo. So I'm not seeing anything particularly interesting on here. No, a lot of, lot of power though. High energy, high wind and stuff. But no, it's basically just you know, coal and well, a tiny bit of coal, stone. Yeah, so the basic resources, but it's another planet where it's another, you know, entirely, entirely um, rocky. So you could quite build quite the big base here, I think. Cool. So where then? Is the other planet so it's inside? Okay, so Corvi 4. No, wrong button. So Corvi 4 is oh, look at that, that's awesome. Presumably, you could get double planet, you know, planet rises here. Then, well, not presumably, you must, must get you know, double planet rises. Oh, look at that! Look at that. It's so cool this game at times. Let's head over here and see what this planet's all about. So what we got some silicon, coal and stone again. See anything particularly interesting from a cursory look? We've not found a planet yet in this solar system that's got water on it. They've all been weird ones, as it were. So we have two lava, and this one doesn't have any water. No, no ocean. And obviously, the gas giant only has hydrogen. So that's interesting. But there's no special resources on here either. Okay, so is that there's one more, isn't there? Number six, all the way over the other side of the uh, planet Barren Desert. So it doesn't look like this entire solar system has any water in it. That's interesting. Oops, what happened there? So let's do that. Let's top up. On everything. And get all that. So Corvy 6 is all the way over there. Yeah, so I don't really played anything this week apart from that. That puzzle game, Maquette, um, just kind of not been not been in the mood. Um, I think a lot of, particularly gamers who play the t these types of games, are probably similar that they tend to go full bore. You know, on a game. You know, when they first get into it, they get sort of. I don't like you to use the word obsessed, but you know, because I, I mean, obsession is a you know, you know, a mental health issue and and all that sort of stuff. But but yeah, kind of you know, it becomes all-consuming for a short period of time. 
and then you just sort of burn out. Not, I don't, t I don't tend to properly burn out in games, but I get the flip side where I'm like, I, you know, just not interested in playing it. Um, let's speed up a little. This is quite a long way out. This this thing, isn't it? It's actually quite a big, quite a big solar system. Uh, yeah, and after streaming it, you know. I think I worked it out it was close to eleven hours of streaming the week I was off. Of the of just this, because I also did I also did Factorio here. But yeah, I think I probably And then the week after I played it hugely in my personal time to refactor all my bases. So yeah, I think I think I then got got a bit sick of it really. <laughs> I'm hoping the end isn't too grindy. Um, although I've, uh, this is taking a while to get here, isn't it? Although I've at least sort of. Oh yeah, it's way out. Although I've at least sort of set my planets up, you know, that you know producing stuff won't be too hard. It, I think it's kind of going to depend on this Dyson sphere thing because. I say to produce the sciences we need, sorry, the sciences, the antimatters we need, is going to take a lot of power, which is why we need Dyson Sphere, and I don't know how expensive they are to build. I imagine quite expensive. My understanding of how it works, because I've obviously not done it yet, but my understanding is basically that, so currently the solar sails in the, in the Dyson Swarm expire, they have a, a limited lifetime. Uh, and what you do with what you're doing with the Dyson Sphere is you launch using rockets um, like almost struts, like support members, um, and then you add essentially add the solar sails into the Dyson Sphere instead of into the into the swarm. And when they're in the sphere, they are. This is much more like a moon, this, isn't it? But yeah, when they're in the sphere, they're permanent. Um, they don't they don't expire. So that lets you build up and build up and build up the power. The, you know, the more nodes you have, the more... Yeah, it's got, like, asteroid craters and stuff. Cool. Can't see anything interesting in terms of resources, though. Let's have a quick look. Oh, this is this fire ice. Where's that? Oh, there we go. Is that all of the fire? No, so there's another one somewhere else as well. So there's 152,000 there. Where's the other 152,000? Oh, yeah, there. So you got... Oh, that was the one we were looking at before. Uh -huh. Oh, there it is. There we go. So fire ice there and there. And where are we? We're here. Okay. Yeah, so that's my sort of understanding uh, of how it works. Just fire ice again. I can't remember what you do with fire ice. It's um, graphite, I think. But yeah, so that's interesting. So this entire solar system lacks... Um, water. Is that another star? Oh yeah. I say it's very. You can't really tell how far things are away. So do we want to try and head for the black hole? Or well, the ne neutron star would be interesting. Uh, let's. Should we try and do that? Because it's a fair way away. But I think hop, skip, and jump wise, we could probably get there. Yeah, I think we could actually. So maybe where should we go next? So we go maybe to this blue one, an O-type star. How far are? We? Oh, that's quite a way away. Maybe. Have we, is there another blue one on the way? Not really. So that's another K-type. 
I know I've not been to a Kato. So if we go something like that. I mean that's quite a distance traverse, isn't it? So seven and eleven, so that's like five light years. Yeah, okay, so let's see if we can get to Epsilon Aquary. Oh, yeah, so nothing massively interesting, I guess. So, we're looking for Epsilon Aquary. Uh, and where are you going to be? Uh, it should be marked, because it's... Ah, what was that? Oh, no. I'm sure there's... Oh, there we go. That's That's the badger. So it's a fair distance. What about these other ones? 5.64, 7.39, 2, 27.8. Crikey. So let's head over to that one. A little bit of a boost. And then... Oh. I think there is a way of, like, marking them. Can't you pin them or something? No, that didn't work. We're almost there, though. So it's dropped out. We're almost, almost out of juice. So this is... Is this right? Yeah. Epsilon Aquarii. So just three planets in this. So we're actually quite close to the first two stars. So where are they? There's one there. So let's head up that way. Do do dum dum da. So again, nothing particularly special here, and it's also it's just another barren rock, isn't it? I'm guessing most of the planets probably end up being barren rocks. But we've been here. Let's let our charge recover a bit. So, number two is there. Should we have a look at it? So we've got, here we've got Fire Ice and Kimberlite Ore. Again, it's basically just another barren desert. I guess it means there's a lot of building space. Looking on the positive side. Uh, where is it? Oops, don't want to go. No, no! Where are we going? At number two, there you go. Yeah, I think I think I've seen people pinning planets basically, but I, d I don't quite know how you do that. So let's go and have a look, but as I say, I'm expecting it. It's very similar to the other planet on the other solar system. Cool, fine, no problems. So 
This looks like quite a few big reserves with lots and lots of open space. So these are probably perfect planets for building, you know, fairly big, big fa factories on. Let's let our child recover a bit. I think where we might be going next. So I want to head out there. So that's a, a nice one. Icefield Gelisol. The heck does Gelisol mean? But yeah, again, mostly sort of uh, standard stuff, really. So we want to head. Where are we heading? We're heading for the black hole, hopefully. So if we head to uh, and and Gen and Jetina. So yeah, we're gonna have a long, boring trip there, I think. How far is that? Oh, that's 16 light years. Okay. So probably best to hop round, I think, maybe. Blue Giant. Hmm. Right, how's our energy doing? Yeah, okay. Okay. So let's go and have a look at the f uh, third planet in this system, just for completeness really which is where where are you uh, uh, we want epsilon like Yuri 3 don't we there we go <laughs> oh. Cafe Borealis. I know yeah, there's I talked on this on a previous stream. They they use a like random name gem, generator to name the, the solar systems. But it's interesting how it produces you know quite sort of almost sensible names for, for them. Why well, say that? Kalbala la crab. There you go. There was also a mention uh, in one of the somewhere. I'm not sure where. So this is basically like like my ice, ice planet back home, isn't it? Basically. About potentially potentially having combat in the game of some description. I'm not sure about that. I think I kind of prefer. Maybe if it was combat free, it just seems like an extra extra thing to worry about to be honest with you. So this just looks like I say another ice another ice planet and have we got I'm not sure why I'm getting that circle. I don't know if you can see that on the on the stream. Uh, so we've got fractal silicon again. What's the difference with fractal silicon then? Maybe that produces the silicon thing is, you know, um, what do you call them? Silicon crystals, is it? Maybe instead of just, you know, silicon ore, it gives silicon crystals. Where the heck was it? Over that way. Let's go and have a look. I 
I like that it's called fractal silicon, and this is a fractal shape. That's quite clever. Um, what does this say? Fractal, fractal silicon. It is a rare natural silicon ore with a unique geometric fractal structure. After the single crystal grows to a certain size, the branch of smaller silicon crystals grow from the matrix. Crystal fracture. Crystal fractal is a natural purification mechanism. The more fractal algebra, the higher the purity. Among them, fractal silicon with more than six generations can directly be used as the raw material for making lattice silicon. I'm not quite sure what that's saying, but I think it means yeah that it produces um, uh, what should we call it straight off? Um, what do you call them? Um, the um, uh, silicon crystals, is it? Right, how are we doing? So we've got 1.25 gigalijoules. So let's let's let that fully recharge. And then we want I want to go there basically. Is that right? Yeah, we want to go to We are gonna have a big big jump somewhere, aren't we? Maybe we could do that. You know, nip across and go around, I think. I want to see the black hulk, basically. That's all I really want to do in this stream. And are we fully charged? We are fully charged, so let's get going. What was that called? Was it what well, is that it? Anti Antigena and Jitana. No. Jitana. Is that where we go? Yeah. And Jitana. Uh, so if we get a little bit of speed on. And. Drop out. Ooh. Press the wrong button then. Uh, yeah, they're a bit bright there, aren't they? So, where are we in this? Okay, so we're close to the start. So, alright, so we're right close to Angitana 1. Should be down here. Just now five, two and three. Where's number one? There it is. Just blast over there. This, I mean, there are a couple of upgrades for the power and stuff, so we're not doing this as efficiently as we could. But that's fine. I've got a couple of hours, so I'm sure we will get to the black hole. This looks like it's probably another lava planet. It's quite fast. It's moving across the screen. Okay. So yeah, another lava planet. What we got here then? So we got again nothing particularly interesting, I guess. There's a lot of resources though. I mean, we got you know 30 mil 31 million iron ore, 27 million copper ore. So this is a big boy in terms of resources, but got no special no special resources. Lots of solar energy there, but then quite difficult to. Uh, Put too much solar down without overlapping all your all your things. One of the things I did think about testing is whether I presume it won't, but could you 
build a Dyson Sphere in you know in one um, solar system and, and use the power you know what they call them you know the power transmitter things to take you know bring it over to another solar system I would suspect not but I know the warpers allow you to get higher efficiency and the idea is that they're warping you know warping space effectively to get more you know photons or whatever into your collector so I don't know if that could potentially operate across across solar systems. I suspect not, as I say. Might be a bit OP to do that. But right, so we've recharged a bit. It does again again it, you know, it is just really, really pretty this game. Which isn't everything, you know, but it really, it does help. I think. Right, so Oh, I didn't look at how many... Was it four planets in this solar system? Uh, so we've got... Oh, no, it's five in total, but these look like... Gas giant and, and desert. Together. So they're around the other side of the star. There. Oh, there they are. One of the things the uh, Dyson Sphere is weirdly use uh, Dyson's form in Swarm in particular is really use weirdly useful for is working out that you like you're into orientation. So when you're on one planet, they help you because they let you know where the sun is basically, uh, and that then lets you mentally orientate yourself quite quite a bit easier. Because you know, when you're just looking at the blackness of space, is the is the sun just over there, or is it that way, or is it that way, or is it that way? Um, it can be quite confusing. So this just looks like a, a different sort of gas giant, at the very least. Looks more like a, a Jovian style gas giant. I suspect the gas giants are all the all the same size as well. You know, if they've made all of the rock planets, uh, not rock planets, you know, solid planets, uh, the same size. Excuse me, I'm, I'm yawning. I really am knackered. <laughs> uh, if they made them all the same size, I suspect they probably made the gas giants all the same size as well. Oh. Banging my microphone as well. Dear, oh dear. Woo! So yeah, it just looks like a uh, just looks like a Jovian style. Um. Where are we going? No! Go on to the planet. Right, there we go. So it's another rocky one. Oh, this so my on my home solar, home solar system, um, I got a sort of similar sort of rocky type of planet. Um, and it has that wind noise, the high speed wind noise, but the wind ratio is actually really low. So it doesn't make sense. Um, but here we've got a nice higher wind ratio. So the swirling wind kind of makes sense. Uh, but again, I mean, it's massively loaded with stone. But there's nothing particularly interesting here again. I wonder if water is a relatively limited, you know, relatively limited resource. Right, what have you got on? Your hydrogen... Oh, collectible deuterium. Aha. Uh -huh. Nice. Yeah, I suspect the end game of this is uh, is quite grindy. Just because 
you know, it's giving you so many solar systems and stuff. They must clearly be thinking, you know, it's like the, the scale up thing where, you know, you go from your own planet to a solar system to, you know, multiple solar systems. Um, and of course, we're so far down in the tech tree, there's not a lot left for us to do apart from kind of grind out loads of stuff, which tends to suggest we're going to have to build everywhere. Which once once there is a blueprint system, that'll that'll be okay. But until there is, it quite could be quite a lot of manually building everything. So we've got oops, we've got another. Uh, oh, we've got two more planets. Have we? Yeah, number four and number five over here as well. So that's got Kimberlite. Shall I? Am I going to bother with going to them? Oh, it's just another grey, grey rock, isn't it? It says Gobi. What does Gobi mean? It's got no ocean though. And what did he call this? Barren Desert Horizontal Rotation. Okay, so that obviously is rotating, you know, horizontal, uh, perpendicular to the plane, basically. That's interesting. But barren, we've seen plenty of barren deserts. So let's let's go to four and find out what it means by Gobi. I mean, it's, unless it's just another way, because there's the Gobi Desert, isn't there? So I don't know if that's just another way of saying desert, basically. So where is it? Uh, was it number four we were going to? Yeah. Yeah. So, Antijar 4 is that way? Anjatana. They're quite close, aren't they? Mm. No. Uh, where was it? Angertana four. Okay. I'm kind of anticipating playing this um, this game until it's until I do. You know, achieve that that end goal, and then basically leaving the game until it leaves early access. Now, I don't I don't really know how long it's going to spend in early access. I think quite a while, but I'm not sure I'll you know keep I'll do new because with Factorio, whenever whenever they did a sort of new version, and I mean even in between, I was playing it you know a new map basically or continuing my old map. So even when they did, you know, I mean, I, well, I say, I tend to play games where I play them intensively and then not at all. Um, so I was sort of, you know, I would build a factory. And this is why I'm doing the Megabase series um, at the weekends, because I'm trying to, I'm basically trying to see if I can stick with <laughs> building a mega base because what tends to happen is I get bored um, at the repetition um, you know because once you're massively OP and versus the biters and all of your tech is researched and all you all you're researching is buffs um, then you're just grinding stuff out you know you're just building more and more and more I mean obviously there comes that point then you have to optimize and all that sort of stuff but I don't think I'm going to build a mega base that kind of needs that, given how powerful my machine is. Um, so what what is a goby? But yeah, I would usually then sort of start start a new map. So I think it's just a sort of rock world, basically, isn't it? So it's not a not a desert as such, but a sort of, you know, rocky world, I guess. Again, nothing spectacularly interesting in terms of resources. 
We see even here, it's, you know, super pretty. Just eclipses and stuff. Right, let's let, let's let our power charge up and work out which plant, which solar system we're going for. So we're heading that way. So if we head to Tegman, a K-type star, it's two light years away. Now, I say, how do I, how do I tag that? Lock North Pole, follow rotation, following off. Direction North Pole. I don't know. So if there is a tagging system, I don't know what it is. Okay. We're fully charged, though. Uh, let's put some more juice in the old machine. And we're going for Tegman, which is just over there. That's convenient. Let's just get a bit of juice going. Uh, get a bit of speed going. And... Engage warp number one. They did, they uh, explained what they were doing with light. So astronomical units are not as they should be. There's not as many AUs in a um, you know, in a solar system uh, in ratio to light, light years as they should be. Uh, oh, we're a bit down. We're below the plane of the ecliptic. So, is there anything of interest here or is it just more of the same? We've got a barren desert with boatloads of cut of stone, but nothing particularly interest, interesting. I'm surprised at how few sort of um, Earth-like planets we've seen. But then I guess I've only done a small sample. So this is another ice field. Fire ice and optical grating crystals, but not many of them. Okay. And let's just look at one. What's number one? Ooh. Oh, it's another lava planet. Lots of... Uh, so it looks like lava planets have loads and loads of iron, copper, and then something else, you know, titanium or silicon. I'm surprised that the few, you know, the relative lack of um, water. That's interesting. So what's that? That's uh Oh, okay. So this is, looks like an earthy one because it's got crude oil. Shall we go there? Let's go and have a look at that one. What have you got? Oh, you've got deuterium as well. Mm. So let's go and have a land on Tegman 3, which is just over there. Look, see what this one's all about. I was quite, when I did that first jump in the last thing, I was really paranoid about. I was like, oh, how much, you know, how much, um, how many warps does it burn and all this sort of stuff. Look at this place. Oh, cool. So this is a different type of... What the heck is that meant to be? Different type of flora altogether. They look like mushrooms, don't they? I don't know if that's what they're meant to be. Mm. So this has got crude oil, then. Because this is... The, the other... Or, um, you know, Earth-like planet. Or did it? I was going to say it didn't have crude oil on it, but actually I think it might have. In fact, it did actually, yeah. Yeah, it did, because the, I was I was noting that the numbers were really big as well. So, you know, four and three. It was like that on the other, yeah. Clearly your home, you know, oil producer is a lot, a lot less, you know, you know 
uh, what do you call it? Abundant, as it were. Not abundant. Can't remember what you call it. Or it's, you know, crammed full of resources. So we've got absolutely boatloads of coal again. Loads of crude oil. 44. Wow. Organic. Oh, we got actual organic crystals here. Okay. Where are they? Oh, just down. Just down south. Just over here. There we go. Can't remember if it had that. I don't think it did on the other one. Had some other weirdness. So they're pretty damn ugly, aren't they? <laughs> Let's be frank about it. They're just sort of green blobs. It was quite useful. But yeah, I mean, I'm impressed that it's got multiple biomes. I kind of just assumed that, you know, all the biomes would be the same for the um, Earth-like planets. Oh, and it's got trees as well as trees with green fruits on them. Mm. Cool. All right, let's let it charge up again. And we will head to our next solar um, yeah, solar system. So, which way are we going? Alright, we're going that way. But that is quite... Oops! Black hole. That is quite a long way away. So how about we head... Probably if we do that, that... And then we can look at our two, two super interesting ones that I want to get to. So I want to go to Zeta Scorpi. Yeah. It is a long way away. So we may end up dropping out a warp. But we can just sit there and recharge for a bit. Okay, how are we doing? We've got 1.57, 1.58, okay, so let's get ourselves launched and sort of pointing in the right direction, which is where Kaffa, where are we got? We're looking for Zeta Scorpi. Which may not be marked, thinking about it, because it's so far away. It's going to be the opposite direction, isn't it, to them? So it's going to be like this way. No. Uh, which way is it going to be? So it's got the ones we've been to marked. So we want to go... Well, we want to go to Zeta Scorpi, which is mm. this is going to be difficult to work out, isn't it? Is it going to be one of these? Zeta Array and Ah, uh, where we go? Ah, see to Scorpi. There we go. So, if we get over there, let's build up speed a little bit, and then let our thing recover. So we've got maximum maximum juice in the tank. Five, four, five, five, six, seven, eight. There we go. So, walk away. So, I don't think we'll be able to get there. 
it's sort of one hit, and I think you drop out of warp when you run out of juice. It might be quite close then. Because we're about halfway there and about halfway through. Yeah, we're going to get close. But one. Yeah, we're going to make it. I think. Which is. Oh, yeah, so we dropped out of warp there. But this is where we want to be, isn't it? Oh. So let's get some, make sure that's topped up. Right. How far away are we? Oh, it's literally got one. One planet orbiting it. Which is Oceanic Jungle. Mm -hmm. Which is and it's got spiniform stalagmite crystals. Those are the um uh fiber optic ones. Mm. So should I warp again? How far away are we? I could just try and do a, a quick warp. Yep, there we go. So that's where we want to be going. So it looks like you can get about seven light years on a, a complete charge. Let's have a look at this. Oh, it's different again. Where are you going? There you go. There you go. Although it's, it's not that different to the first planet. So maybe there's sort of four biomes. Which button did I hit? There we go. So yeah, we got the spine spongy for me. Uh it's oil oil. There we go. How much oil has it got? hundred and twenty three point three. Good lord. And twenty four million cal. Crikey. So where's the old spongy form in? Let's go and have a look at them. Uh, can't see him. Spongy form. Why does that say can I make a race on the Oh, I took this wrong. On the bottom, it supposedly tells me what what pro, what I'm streaming, and it's same Factorio. But I've changed it. It's Dyson Sphere Program. Oh, I don't know. Uh, so where are you, spongy formies? Looks like it's probably going to be one one deposit. Is it? Where are they? Crude oil, silicon, crude oil, stone. Where the heck are these spiny form things? That's silicon. Organic crystals. Coal. Oh, there we go. So that's it. Oh, it's literally one with 2.7 million in it. Blimey. So it's north, up northward. Wait, I'm going the opposite kind of way, aren't I? No, southward, wasn't it? It's down here somewhere. There you go. I think those are the ones that give. Yeah, there you go. 
so they go directly give the old fiber optic things. Cool. Right, so next stop. Where are we heading? We're heading that way. So if we go... How far away is that? That's 11 light years. So if we go to... We haven't been to a K-type star yet, have we? Oh no, Kaffa was a... That's an M-type. Oh no, we have Tegman. Tegman was a K-type. What's this? This is a F-type. Have we been to an F-type? I suspect the types of planet are probably linked to the type of star. K type, G type. So we've not been to an F type. So we might as well sort of tick that off of our bucket list. Uh, so we want to go to Ven Venabulum, which we should just reach with what charge we've got. Let's top everything up. Okay. Right. Off we go. Vena, 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 Something like that. Sort of like that. Right. So, where are you going to be? You're going to be. I mean, the black hole should have. Where's Delta Virginis? Was that it? Venebulum. Yeah. So I want to go Venebulum, and then we should be able to hit one or other of the neutron star, or although we make it, you know, maybe easier to go because I haven't done these as well. I oh, know we've done a B type. Right. So Venebulum is what we want. Which is there. We're all juiced up. So let's, let's point in the right direction. Let's walk. Let's do the time walk again. Where's it gone? There it is. There it is. got in this oh there's loads of loads of planets here so number five is an ashen jelly salt with fire ice so I think that's just another you know sort of moony one uh, number four is an ice field jelly salt and that's got fire ice on it as well got loads of fire ice all over my planets what we got there? Barren Desert again. And then what was that? That's number three. So number two. Oh, that's an organic. That's prairie. It says, oh look at how green that is. Let's we'll go there then. And then number one is what? Oh, it's a sulfuric acid one. So it's for some volcanic ash planet. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so we want to go to Venabulum 2. Which is that way. That away. Cool. Why does it say Factorio on that thing? I have changed it. So if you click on the the Dubri to, you know, do the edit, it comes up with what I've got, which is Dyson Sphere Program. Yeah, whatever. Uh, let's click back on 
here. Shame no one's watching again. Oh well. Oh well. I think it's a weird, weird time to be streaming, isn't it? But I kind of have to stream in a sort of slot between after work and before dinner, effectively. Because there are some evening things I have, or what you often have to do. This is fluorescent green, this. Look at this, boy. Look at how green that is. Obnoxiously green. It's obviously got, excuse me, crude oil and organic crystals again. Coal. They use uh, Perlin noise, I think, to generate the the pattern patterning. Has that that feel to it. I quite like to. Uh, if I was doing something like, you know, in the gaming world, as it were, I'd quite like to invent a new way of doing this sort of thing. You know, a sort of noise generator that would produce something that's a bit more organic. It has, it has the sort of, you know, coastally nature of it. But when you look at the... You know what? What is that? Effectively, it's just a a weird lake. It's not a, not a river. But I think, I think you could do with something that actually generates something that's a bit. I I do wonder sometimes what the sieve team, how the sieve team do it, because they you know they they expert at producing actual planet like um, random noise things. So yeah, I've got not got quite a bit, quite a lot of organic crystal again. All very useful, but uh, it's very similar actually to our starting planet. Apart from the whole, I mean, obviously the water, these our starting planet has more, a lot more water um, in big oceans. But in terms of what's here, it's not that different. Obviously, got the organic crystal and way more oil but it's basically starting planet is basically just um trees and that's it uh, this is obviously a lot greener right so oops let's plan our next next stop so we want to go to these. What order do I want to do them in? It's half past four. How far away? You're eight, so you're too far away anyway. The black hole is closest. So let's just go to the black hole. Spectral class X. Right, how are we doing with the, the juice? The juice. Let's let's take off. Get ourselves pointed in the right direction. And um, what did it call? What's it called, the black hole? Is it just black hole? And where is it? It's down there. So it's D S R J <laughs> So it's gibberish basically. It should be down somewhere. What about what are these? Ensar, Epsilon, K. Okay. Let's 
So we need to score by what we got there. So where is it? Where is it be in relation to everything else? So it's like the opposite direction to zeta score by. So it's if you that's zeta score by, it's this way. It's got to be these, isn't it? They can't be over here. No, it's this way. Are they too far away for us to see? That doesn't make any sense. How can I see those two, but not those two? Well, I mean, obviously the black hole is black, but... Why is it not on... Why is the pulsar not on here? Hmm. Because that's 12 light years away. Why can't I see them? Because they should be... here-ish, shouldn't they? Venabulum 5 is off to my right. Yeah. So it should be over here somewhere. I am calm first. Yeah, they're there. Why are you not showing me them? So it's... I'm trying to point myself and then check on the... On the star map. Maybe... Oh! Oh, there we go. There it is. So it's eight light years away. Uh, okay. No, it isn't. Oh no, that's the neutron star I'm looking at. So is that? One of these has got to be the black hole, hasn't it? Because if that's the neutron star... Unless it literally just won't show you it because it is, you know, it is black and so you can't see it. Let's head towards the neutron star then. Where's the neutron star gone? Where's the neutron star? So pointing at the neutron star. Oh, it's down there actually. So what, it's one of these? Oh, there we go. There it is. Uh, yeah, so let's just walk the place it. Is that, a, is that a planet? Wow. Pretty. Oh, yeah. There's a planet. Ah, oh, this has got unipolar magnets on it. These are the fabled, fabled unipolar magnets. Apparently you have very, very few of those. Maybe they only appear in your black hole solar system. Maybe that's why you have so few of them. Well, we've got to go there then and see unipolar magnets. Oh, does it just represent it? Oh, is that? That's a black hole, yeah. Just represents it as purple. Mm, okay. Right, so where's the... That's the...
planet there, isn't it? So let's head up to the planet first. So, oh, there we go. There's some more. I think there must be multiple veins of the old uni, uni, unipolar magnets. Because it's six million in total. Yeah, so there's multiple veins. Cool. Let's have a look at these. Oh, look at these. Look at them. They're funky. Mm -hmm. uh, don't we know what it makes out of them? I'll turn it. Recipe. All right, spinophones give you nanotubes. Not. What is it gives you them then? Or maybe I'm just thinking that because it uses them. So they're optical grating crystals. The, oh, unipolar magnets is particle containers. Okay. Optical grating crystals. Fire icicles. All right, yeah, Casimir. Am I making Casimir crystals? Mm. Cool. Okay. How are we doing? About halfway charged. Mm. Okay. I did. There is meant to be a thing that. I think your clock changes speed. Because obviously there's relativistic effects near a black hole. Let's see if we can how close we can fly to, to the black hole. Always a wise and sensible decision to fly straight towards a black hole. Quite a while away, I think, isn't it? Yeah. Let's just speed up a bit. He's so pretty. So these, the color, the, this is meant to be the accretion disk, I think. So um, it's not realistic in the sense that it would only have this when it was feeding. 
Can I fly into the black hole? Let's fly around it first. Oh, weird noises. Yeah, I think it's meant to represent the accretion disk. So, when a black hole is feeding, when material is going into the black hole, um, if it's not at the exact right angle, well, then uh, it basically gets ejected out. But also, as a, obviously, as it, oh, so this is cool. As it um, gets faster and closer and closer, it gets more sort of, you know, sorry, as it as it gets closer to the black hole, it speeds up. From our our perspective, um, and so it begins to emit energy and, and all sorts of stuff like that. And the gravity is massively intense, so particles start to get ripped apart and all sorts of stuff, all sorts of fun activities. I'm wondering if I can screen cap this. There we go. So if we F12, I think it is in Steam, isn't it? So. Just a screen cap like that. Might use that as a thumbnail. Well, that might be better if it was like that, maybe. See if we can get back up into into that there. Better if I'm going the other way, I guess. I don't want to do that. There's someone saying on the Reddit um, that it'd be cool if you could fly into the black hole and go to a new new galaxy. Do some screen screen caps. Um, you know, with a sort of new starting seed. Should I try and fly into the black hole? <laughs> what the hell? So if I, I I think I'll save the game. In case it does sort of bin it. So let's go sixteen. Okay. Let's just fly into the black hole, shall we? See what happens. Oh, it won't let me. <laughs> cool. Uh, so, I mean, there's a quarter of an hour left on the stream, so I could also. I've got no power left. Uh, but if we point ourselves at the. Um, what should we call it? Uh, hmm. Neutron star. Wow. So it didn't. I, there didn't seem to be any. My clock didn't seem to change speed or anything. Um, so that's the neutron star. So point ourselves over there, and we'll let the charge recuperate a bit before we. We need about half charge, I guess, if we go in three light years. It's going to take a while. But yeah, that's cool. I like that. That's uh, very clever. It's good that there's a planet around it as well. Um, but yeah, the glowy stuff is meant to be like I think meant to be the you know the stuff being eaten by the black hole that's not not you know not quite going in essentially. Um, but you know if it was feeding and that was it was producing that, um, there should actually be two ejection. Um, what are they called? Ejection spouts, I think, is the sort of name for them. Uh, basically, as I say, if things aren't quite at the right angle, then they get sort of vomited back out into space. Um, and what you see is um, it's one of the ways of telling there's a black hole there rather than something else. But you see, you get these gigantic plumes of material. And I mean gigantic, you know, galactic scale. Um being sort of spewed out on either side. But yeah, there should be like relativistic effects as you get close to it, and I mean, really, it should. It, I wouldn't. Be, I shouldn't have been able to fly into that because that 
that would have just ripped me to pieces. Um, how are we doing? About half charge, yeah. So let's uh, let's get warping. Looks like this planet here as well. So, warp. so this this is our pulsar, isn't it? I've not gone to the wrong place. Yeah, neutron, sorry. So neutron star is like a failed black hole essentially. Alright, oh, planet ice. Oh, this has got unipolar magnets as well. Okay. Uh, yeah, neut neutron star is like a failed black hole. Essentially, it's sort of it's become sufficiently dense that essentially everything becomes neutrons. Because you can make a neutron basically by squishing an electron and a, a, a um, proton together, um, and uh, the gravity gets such so high that that's effectively what happens. All of the all of the matter becomes neutrons. Um, it breaks down all sort of notion of actual atoms, um, and you just get a, a, a massively dense. Uh, oh, where am I heading? I'm heading towards the wrong thing entirely. Where's the planet? No, light years away. Where's the planet? So heading completely the wrong direction. That's the one there. Unless I flew past it, did I? Yeah, and it, it becomes denser and denser and denser until basically all the matter is becomes neutrons, but it's not big enough, not massive enough to overcome the... Uh... Now, I always get this the wrong way around. I think it's the strong nuclear force, which is basically the thing that keeps... Um... Bang! That cre keeps um, atoms from collapsing. Ba basically, that's... That's not actually what it is, but that's the easiest way to think about it. Um, and yeah, so you, you there that force, strong strong nuclear force, or it might be the weak one. I can I can never remember. Um, basically, uh, pushes outwards, and gravity is obviously pulling inwards, um, and it's essentially a battle between the two. And if if the star is sufficiently massive, there's enough stuff. Then the gravity will overcome the the weak nuclear force, or strong strong nuclear force, whichever one it is, um, and you know, then you get a sort of how to put it um, catastrophic collapse. So it's like a an unstoppable collapse that basically means everything crushes down into a singularity, and that is the black hole. Um, and we don't have the physics to explain them properly. Yeah, so a neutron star is it underwent the same process, crushing down, but it never actually got got past the it wasn't big enough to get to become a black hole essentially. And who said my physics course was a complete waste of time? <laughs> I get to tell absolutely nobody on a Twitch stream about how about neutron stars and black holes. I don't want a button I'm pressing there. There we go, that's better. Sorry, was there anything interesting here? Got more unipolar mag magnets and fractal silicon, fire ice. I have a lot of fire ice kicking about. Is there any nearby? Any anything interesting? It's all titanium. It's got lots of fire ice over that way. Let's kind of kind of look at that. All of your fire ice over here. It's a fairly dull one. Yeah, I, I can't imagine you need to exploit all of your all of your pla all of your solar systems. It's got to be that you know you maybe only need to exploit two 
and then if you want if you wanted to build multiple Dyson spheres, then you would you know have to exploit lots and lots of your solar solar systems. Um, and I'd guess that speeds everything up, but I'm, I'm sure they've they've done it at the scale they have so that in case they want to do some end uh, you know additional end game. But also like Factorio, so that you can mega base it, so that you can pound through um, white um, science as much as you want. I mean, it can't be a coincidence that, that if you, you know, it's white science. It, that's got to be a, you know, parallel to to Factorio. Um, so yeah, I assume if you're exploiting an entire solar system, you would be um, you would be doing so to to make a mega base. However, you want to think about that. But yeah, my sort of plan, my thought is to exploit Kaffa, you know, that Kaffa solar system, because it's nice, relatively close. Um, and we can build all sorts of stuff. It's got most of the exotic minerals like this. Um, and it's got an organic, you know, Earth like planet. Um, so, yeah, I think that's that's my plan. And then we'll have to see if we need to exploit somewhere else as well. Right, so we've got five or so minutes left, so we can go and have a look at the actual pulsar. Where is it? There it is. I keep calling it a pulsar, it's a neutron star. Is it not? It's quite a long way away. I just look, it's dropped a lot of frames. I don't know if that was while I was buggering about with the, you know, with the black hole. I suspect it probably was. Okay. Well, I like that speckling effect. That's quite good. I'll have to look up. Are neutron stars pulsars? Is that what they are? I'm sure they are. Whoop. That's pretty epic. I mean, they might, it must be. I haven't just got that confused. But they spin, basically, pulsars. Um, and it blasts out a magnetic field that whips around. I mean, it I mean, this is this is like a tepid rotation for a neutron star. I mean, a, a pulsar, if it is the same thing. Shall we get another screenshot? I'm feeling quite screenshotty today. Tininess of our mech up against the power. Let's see if we can get him a bit more. Can I get a bit more parallel to the rotation? Let's give him a go again. You could almost play this game as like a tourist or something. Right then, um, I think I might head over. Since we've got five or so minutes and most of a charge, let's see if we can get to. So we've not been to an A type star, have we? We've been to a B type. So if we go to that one, see what's going over there. So we're on Epsilon Sextantis. That's what we're looking for. Epsilon Sextantis, there we go. We're all zoomed out. There we go. So it's. There's a bit of juice. Should be able to just warp it, I think. We've got. So we'll go here. End of stream now. I then need to decide whether I can be bothered <laughs> to play the game off stream. Because I'm not I'm not gonna stream it again until next Friday. Um, 
I'll probably end up treating these streams as like highlight streams. But that is going to require me to play the game. Where I haven't been... Haven't had the energy to do so. Bang. Ran out of juice at the perfect point there. So let's have a look at this solar, this, this solar system. So we've got three planets here. We've got another barren desert, but with even more fire ice. Clearly fire ice is the way to go. We've then got, what's this, a gas giant? Yeah, looks like our home gas giant with fire ice and hydrogen. And then what's this? What is that? That's a arid desert satellite. Yeah, water is surprisingly minimal. But then I, I guess you've got lots of planets with... Because you only use water for sulfuric acid and something else. Can't remember. No, can't remember. Um, and, uh, you know, there's obviously planets with sulfuric acid, you know, lakes on them, so... So I guess that's as expected. Shall we... Um, uh, neither of these are particularly interesting, are they? What you got on you? Well, that's got a sulfuric acid somewhere. Cool. Oops. Right, so where do we want to head? We want to head to one and two, I guess. Where are they? There they are. Yeah, so uh, I will head over to these uh, and do my sign-offs while I do so. So if you have been watching, then thank you for doing so. Uh, it's very much appreciated. Uh, if you enjoyed the, the stream or the catch up, uh, if you enjoyed, it'll be on YouTube eventually as well. Um, I will be uploading all the VODs to YouTube to continue that series there as well. So if you've been watching on YouTube, you know, thanks, thanks for doing so. Thumbs ups and follows and all that sort of stuff would be very much appreciated though. Uh, uh, it's not a problem if you don't. Um, but yeah, so if you have been watching, I um, hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you might have learned something. Um, I guess we didn't really do much this stream. A bit of research and lots of exploration, but it does show off how pretty the game is, how varied, how big the game is. Um, I think it's a really quite impressive achievement overall for you know an early access game. I've been very, very impressed with it. Um, and the development team look at the state of this, just a big ball of rock the uh, development team is very active, you know, lots of updates lots of bug fixes um, I don't think they've published the roadmap, but I know they've got one um, so yeah, lots of lots of wonderful things to come, hopefully so yeah, so, so I'll sign off there um, thanks for watching and I will catch you on the next one oh, I'll obviously uh, more Factoria. Basically, weekends are Factoria. Uh, Saturday and Sunday, 3 p.m. GMT for at least three hours. Maybe some weekends a bit bit more, uh, but at least three hours. Three till six GMT. You check the schedule to see when that is your local time. Um, and yeah, uh, that series I'm trying to build a mega base just to explain. In case I, I'm sure I've mentioned it, but uh, trying to build, build a mega base having with that kind of being the only thing I've never really done in the game um, even though I've got 1600 hours I can try and build a, a mega base and fingers crossed by the time we get there or get to some scale of mega base there may be an early access version of the expansion for Factoria that would be that would be awesome uh, if not I'll just do a new, another series uh, my intention is to always have a game of Factorio running on the channel so if that's a game you like, a game you're interested in, then please do follow me, uh, check my schedule, and um, I'll see you in those streams. Yeah, thanks for watching. Cheers. Ending streams is hard.
very hard.